Well, hello there. This is Geeks Assembled, and we are Audio Heads. And today we're discussing uh, another Jago and Lightfoot box set. This is the, the eighth box set, and it is, uh, it's got the Scorchies in it. It's got the, um, it's got the Backwards Men in it. It's got a bunch of other people in it. It's, uh, it is Jago and Lightfoot in Victorian England, so no, 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 no time travel. Um, just them living their best, and, and a woman named Patsy. So okay, um, yeah, that, that's pretty much like the gist of it. <laughs> uh, it's four four separate stories that all have one separate arc, one sort of arc in it. It's a uh, it's also um, it's also really enjoyable uh, because you know the the scorchies are back. I don't I, I they aren't they aren't uh, they aren't voiced by Katie Manning this time. They are voiced by um, I think they are voiced by. Um, well, it doesn't really say here, actually. Ah, well. So I think course. it's probably it's probably Nicholas Briggs. No, it isn't. Who is it then? Well, you've got um, Colonel Fuzz. That's Cameron Blakely. Porcelain Polly, Jenna Russell. Um, Magic Mice. Uh, members of the cast. All right. Yeah. Okay. So the magic mice were members of the cast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Cameron Brickley, uh, Jenna Russell, and, <clears throat> and I guess Robert Whitlock. I anyway, it was it was interesting, and they're back, and uh, they were they were in the fourth Doctor earlier. They're, they're really interesting, a uh, noisy sort of alien life form, and uh, they are they're great. Anyway, uh, what what do you think of it, Lee? With me joining me all the way <clears throat> from Hull, England, and mm -hmm. in the beautiful uh, on the beautiful coast of the English Channel is is our very own. Stellar uh, voice of, of wisdom and wit, uh, Lee Wilson. Come on, I, I, I tell you now, I'm nowhere near the English Channel. <laughs> oh, you aren't? No, no, I we're near the North, North Sea. North Sea, okay. So, yeah, um, as the channel turns into the North Sea, yeah. um, so never mind. Yeah, uh, well, the open the opener in encore of the Scorches. To start the box set off with this mm -hmm. is a brave thing to do because this is the weird one of the box set stories. Mm -hmm. uh, usually they do um, a bit of a surreal story, maybe the second or the third in the box set, but this comes back with the first story. I thought, yeah, quite good. Um, I enjoyed the scotches in this more than I did <laughs> in... Um, the one before, mm -hmm. um, there was more um, giving giving themselves different voices, different characterizations. Um, not one person doing the voices, of course. Um, it it made them a lot better. Um, and it, it's just a story of them taking over the theater, taking over uh, Jago and. Uh, you know, and they're bringing in all the audiences because nobody's seen these dancing puppets before. And, no, um, and, and and this and and this is daft as it may but it's a musical. It's a musical episode. Mm -hmm. We get some singing and dancing. Mm -hmm. We get we get uh, Lisa Bauman singing. We get uh, Christopher Benjamin singing. 
Yeah. Um, adds to the story. Yeah. It really does. Um, because you, you don't expect it at first, then all of a sudden they just start, someone breaks out in song. <laughs> mm. it, it, yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good opener. I, I did enjoy enjoy it. Um, it was about time for a for a musical number musical. Well, they, 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 are, in the, they are in the musical theater. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it was about time to have a musical episode. Yeah. Um... <gasps> And these are yeah. these are the this is the Doctor Who that can can really pull this off, right? Jago and Lightfoot can pull a lot off. Yeah, and and there wasn't there another one the the Doctor and the Pirates, where it was all the yeah. uh, where it was all the yeah. the the Gilbert and Sullivan stuff. Yeah, yeah, that was a few years ago. Yeah, Doctor and yeah. the Pirate with uh, um, old sixteen. Yeah. Um, yeah, a great story to open with. Um, with them controlling, uh, see, at the uh, they were controlling Jago, and who was the other one they were controlling? I can't remember now. It'll come to me. Was it Nancy? But um, with like the strings in the back of them, yeah, uh, which was a bit. Horror horror movie type thing, which I love. Very dark. A little bit. Uh, uh, I was thinking, um, um, Matrix. Mm -hmm. You may think Matrix. I may think of horror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you've seen the latest Matrix, that was a horror movie. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but yeah, great opening on call the score. So then you go on to. Um, the backwards men. Um, this one, it, out of all four, is my least favourite. Uh, just because it was a bit difficult to understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, you had Mister Wednesday, who who had this. Um, was it a contraption where who what turns people sort of back uh, not not backwards as in mentally but backwards as in eyes in the back of the head um yeah it was a, I mean I listened to this one twice just to try understand it I still didn't really understand what was going on yeah so but um I mean well acted I mean written by one of the a great dot who writer, Andy Lane. Um, but yeah, it was just a bit difficult to grasp this one. I'll, I'll come back to that one though. Then the third story <laughs> is called Jago Lightfoot and Patsy. And there she is. Patsy, wow. <laughs> but <laughs> played by. Um, Flamina Kink Clink. Yeah, yeah. Um, a dirty. Well, she's a what we call is it a, a tramp, um, and a bag lady. Um, you know, down and out. Um, but a <laughs> voice it's just great. It's <laughs> and, and as I say, it comes. If this, if you could smell. If it was smell audio smelly, you'd you'd get the, the smell of what um, Jago Lightfoot could smell off Patsy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, great story about um, about this uh, ghost of the a past coming back of the uh, of the island, you yep. know, of the bank of the Thames. Um, who Patsy used to know before he was killed. Um, great, great, great character of Patsy. Um, and then sort of this story, what carries on from this is Higson and Quick, the fourth chapter, which Higson and Quick, of course, is Ellie and Ellie. Inspector. Inspect uh, and the, 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 the copper. Yeah, because... Jago and Lightfoot have been um, taken over 
by the what do you call it? The the things in the the the, the liquid in the barrels from the previous story. Mm-hmm. Um, say Patsy's in this one as well, but she's mm-hmm. under the control of it as well. Um, and so it's um, so Jagan Lightfoot can't be trusted. Jag, I mean Jagan Lightfoot even kills someone in this. Yeah. Um, the old is it old Tom? Um, but I. I did like this one because they say so. You think you're going to a different story, but it is a, a character continuation of the story before, and um, you 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 think, oh, great, Patsy's back, but all of a sudden she's she's got these um, this thing in her head, wanting her to do this, and you know she steals the barrels, hides the barrels, and then all of a sudden, uh, Jag and Lightfoot are all under the control, and it. Is it with with the comedy element in this as well? It's oh great. Gosh, it is funny. <laughs> but yeah, all in all, though, a good box set. It was, it was just very difficulty for the second story trying to understand the reasoning behind that story. I mean, great characterization of the, the backwards men. I like the idea of that. Yeah. But I just didn't. I didn't, just didn't grasp why and what what was going on really, but for the rest of it, I, I you know I, I loved it. As I've always said, Victorian London in the uh, the old dark days, great. Yeah. So yeah, that's my opening thoughts on this. Yeah, I think that the reason for the the second story is because it sets up the idea that these these creatures. These little fish people, what do they call them? Eels. They keep saying eels. They're not they look eels. like they look like <laughs> eels, but they aren't eels. But anyway, these yeah. eels, uh, they, uh, you know, they're they're really the trouble, and the 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 the, 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 me- the mechanism to change the people and like basically in invert their their uh their whole reality you know turn them inside out backwards um is the same kind of technology that that is being used to transfer and transmit these uh these fish people's uh personalities into into their um into their prey well yeah prey because they are talking about you know finishing off you know a transmission of all of the all of their kind into humanity just kind of take over kill a few here and there you know they don't need to they don't need to be successful 100 percent of the time and so i mean like it was just rough i mean like the whole idea was really rough and with jago and lightful out of the way like already being controlled by them you know it was uh it was up to ellie and and inspector quick to to fix it to the copper to you know to turn to to turn it back to uh you know, a safe and yet spooky environment for for Lee's storytelling to to go on. Um, so yeah, it was it was really brilliant. And uh, the other thing that was happening that that you know I noticed was that Ellie was Ellie was not afraid of anything. She was just completely fearless, and and she just push forward uh ellie is like that and then you know uh ellie has been like that all you know all the way along you know and astonishingly well voiced by by lisa bowerman but then there's uh also patsy and patsy was was a bit like ellie in, in so many ways there was like a lot of you know, uh, similar similarities between the two, and um, 
And I've never, I don't know if I've ever listened to Flaminia Clink, clink but um, I probably have. And I probably have seen her as an actress. But I, I just really like the way that that she was also played as a as a as an, a fearless heroine of of the of the stories and um yeah and then there was uh and then there was uh i mean it was it was um this was like from 2014, so um, yeah, it was it was before the fifth or just after the fiftieth, and um, and yeah, so I think that that they that they were looking for some really strange things to put to put next to our Jayco and Lightfoot and. Mm. And so that's what these stories are. These are the strange ones. And scorchies are really weird anyway. And they're they're super high energy little little characters. Um they did have you, did you prefer them in this story or to the other story, the companion chronicle story? Um I actually, I'm trying to think if I've listened to the Companion Chronicle stories. I've listened to one that is, uh, I've listened to one of those stories that was a, it was, uh, I've listened to one with, with Iris Wildtime. Mm. Is, is, and is that one with Katie Manning doing the voices on that as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think it lends more when different actors do the voices. Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying there. There's only there's only so much one actor can do to sort of alter the voice. Right. Not not knocking Katie, but you know. Right, and uh, but the Scorchies had uh, the Scorchies have a. Uh, uh, I mean, because they they'd been done before, it wasn't like like they were coming out of left field for uh for our well, heroes. Apparently, this was done roughly around the same time as, as the uh, Companion Chronicles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone because uh, on the the behind the scenes thing says just as they were sort of finishing off the scorches. They decided to do encore of the scorches for a Jago and Lightfoot. Okay. So it was, you know it was just like a straightaway jump. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but they were. Um, but they they released this later. Then? Uh, most probably, yeah. Yeah, and because uh, I yeah. don't recall. They record everything in, in way in advance, don't they? Yeah, they do. And so, yeah, I've, I I I fully enjoyed the the personalities of of the the baddie, and um, I like the fact that they take over taken over the the whole theater, mm -hmm. and they were trying to turn it into a puppet theater. Which was... well, it's like, it's like um, the you had the two, the male and female characters, like um, watching watching what was going on and and um, commenting on what was going on. Um, but then it, it, it turns out they're puppets as well. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> So where does it stop? <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good that was yeah. a good one. It is a good box set, as I say. It's just a, I found story two just a little bit. Um, I don't know. 
I'm not. I'm. I don't. I don't usually find stories hard to get a grasp of. But mm. I was. I mean, it's not. Um, as a, it's not a surreal story. Mm. It's just that you're thinking, what, why, what's the explanations? What's mm -hmm. why do that? And, you know. Yeah. I mean, a great title though. Wednesday's World of Weird Wonders. Yeah. Mister Wednesday. <laughs> And that, and and just the name, you know, because because in in the U.S. the name Wednesday has a has a connotation of being associated with Wednesday Adams. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a that that's that's all. That's also a sort of gothic, uh, you know, yeah. sitcom. I mean, yeah, I can understand. Is it old Victorian? You know, you used to get all the uh, what do you call it, traveling carnivals with yeah. the freak, with freak shows and stuff. I, I love all that, and I, I, and this is sort of that genre of story. Um, yeah. But I just, I don't know. I was just missing something what clicked into place for me. But I like the idea of the backwards men. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, we, who knows? We may see them again at some point in the future. Yeah. Seen as seen as uh, we haven't gone. We're only say so we're only on to what is it? Um, box set eight, isn't it? We're on to. Yeah, we've got um, seven more. Seven something like that. Seven more. Fifteen. Before, before it all ends. Yeah. So good. <laughs> I'm. I'm glad. I'm glad they did so much with. With uh, Christopher Benjamin and and uh, I mean the still stuff, they still give Christopher Benjamin work, and I know he's retired. He has retired, but um, every now and again he does come back just to uh, yeah. have, have a do um, a Jago cameo in in a story, or um, play a mother in the Avengers. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, that keeps him active, doesn't it? I mean, he, he's getting on a bit now. He's Christopher Benjamin. Yeah, and uh, Trevor Baxter was yeah, sadly is, passed. Is sorely missed. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was like um, he, you know, he he. It was fun listening to him try to talk to the. Those the aliens who are doing the backwards men, like he was, he, they were all like trying to wheel them in, reel them in due to science. Yeah, and that was that was really enjoyable. Like like the the wooing him in, and then then he kept he kept getting wooed in again with the the people with like the, the the little eels, yeah. the fish people. I just thought that that was in the, and then when. They said this is not uh this is not uh just water, this is amniotic fluid. He it was like everything clicked into place for him in his mind and that was one that was a good moment. Well this is it, it's a great combination, Jake. Yeah. I mean Lightfoot, you've got the the doctor, you've got the medical side, the scientific side, the brains. Uh, and then, <laughs> then you've got Jago, um, uh, for the comedy, um, OTT, dramatic, OTT, dramatic. But he's he's not he's not stupid. No, he may come across as stupid, but he's not because most of the stuff what he suggests or says, they take it up and they'll go do it or you know the yeah, you know but. Um, but and he his uh, and he his constant presence in these supernatural activities has given him more and more and more like aptitude and abilities. You know, he 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 might as well be considered a companion at this point. Well, I mean, the they all did. He and he and Lightfoot. You know, they have. Uh, you know they have they have been empowered. 
mm. beyond beyond the the their normal like reality boxes. They they they've lost their reality box. No. <laughs> <laughs> better to go without one of those true but so what well, what else did you have to say about it well i say for me the best thing in the for me personally is is the scorches episode i just love that surreal horror type well uh story but then you got the character of patsy which just stole the stole the last two stories really. Mm -hmm. um, what a character, and I don't think she appears in any more box sets. Huh. So, uh, but don't quote me on that. She might do, but as far as I know, I think these are the only two stories she appears in. But yeah, uh, great a great box set. So, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, because as I said, I just love anything the old Victorian foggy streets, freak shows, and that's just our gig symbol casts. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so God, he loves us so much. Do you see, do you hear that? <laughs> but, oh, yeah. Four great stories. I mean, you always, for me, you I, you always get one story which is either difficult to grasp or, or just feels a bit odd in the box set. Every box set, you sometimes get that. So this is no different. So to, to say what, how much uh, I'm going to give this? Yeah, please do. Just because I've... Because of the difficulty grasping the sort of plot of the second story, um, which doesn't doesn't weigh badly on their acting or anything like that, um, this gets oh, what shall we see? Eight and a half big hugs from Patsy out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. It's just a difficult <laughs> story for me. Yeah, an eight and a half is a pretty good score because eight eight is something that you would enjoy listening to again. Yeah. Um, nine is something that you I'm you really definitely good. will I'm listen really to good. again, and I'm then really ten. Yeah. Ten is something that there is no way that you would not listen to it again, no matter yeah. what happens. I would most and give Woodman another chance and try and figure out. Seven would be something that you may not even, uh, you may not ever try and listen to again, but you enjoyed it the once, you know. Yeah. So I mean, like those are that. That's kind of the way those those that number system lies in in some to in some respect as to the 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 way of uh of um the way we we rate things anyway uh so you said you you most likely would listen again yeah so i gave it eight and a half i mostly will go back uh to say the backwards men um and give it another listen see if there's something i missed um but, you know, I always give things a second chance. Well, maybe apart from Starship Excelsior. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'll, I might delve back into that story. All right. All right. Cool. Um, and and I'll give this I'll give this a nine out of ten. Um, I definitely will listen to it again. Um, uh, but it was it, it was challenging it was fun it was i love the scorchies i think that they're a really cool alien creature i mean like wh like why we can't ever get them in in uh live action like i don't know but um well you never know as soon as we're getting uh beep the meep 
Yeah, beep for me. Oh my gosh, here we go. And uh, so the other thing that was really interesting about uh, all of all of that was that there's also, um, you know, uh, you know that that uh, occasionally these these things that that were um, that were longtime adversaries of of a certain group. Will will become a, an adversary of the other groups, like like uh, at the end of class, weeping angels and stuff. So you just have to know that that it's coming sometime. It, it's just I'd like to see Scorchy's tr like do a jump from audio to video, but uh, that's just me. And um, I'd like to thank you for watching our podcast here. And uh, Jago and Lightfoot, Trevor Baxter, Christopher Benjamin are great. Um, I've always really liked them. I think that the uh, the the our great Doctor Doctor Lightfoot is uh, super hot in an apron, but I think a aprons are great on men, um, on on all men. And um, so just bringing that back just because in this one, he ends up doing some science again. And um, let's see. Uh, man, there's just a lot of good stuff that I don't want to forget. Um, but, you know, if you'd like to join us and, uh, and would like to be part of our podcast all you have to be is 18 have a device that that has a camera and a mic and a zoom and uh talk to lee ahead of time give him the heads up and he will he will connect you with our with our no. yeah with our world and our podcast and we just like to have you but um if you're not if you just want to, to like and subscribe, do that. Hit the bell notification so that there is a, you'll definitely receive a notification. And uh, every time we put out a video, it's two a week or something. And then the other thing is we'd like to, uh, we'd like to suggest that you get your audio adventures from Big Finish, of course. These ones are are sometimes available. I think they're more often available as downloads now than than on uh, yeah. CDs. Yeah. Like like uh, that. Yeah. Um, I, also as well, Big Finish or Baffle Gab or BBC. Yeah, Radio. there's a lot of really good audio creation companies. Uh, there's a hell of a lot out there. Um, mm -hmm. It's just that the main sort of three or four are the ones what we sort of listen to, but there is some other ones out there. Yep. Producing some good stuff. Yeah. And uh, some things are done by fans that are freaking and amazing. Maybe. And some they're not so good. Sometimes they're not, but, <laughs> but sometimes they are. But anyway, yeah. uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, suggest that you, that if you're, if you watch all of our, um, if you've completed watching all of our Audio Heads podcasts, then go ahead and watch all the Drunky G's Audio Who, because uh, all of those are are on YouTube as well. And YouTube is fun, and YouTube is a good community, and the Doctor Who community is pretty lively and happy and stuff on youtube um not always nice to each other but you know that's oh. just the way and anyway uh <laughs> yeah long live christopher benjamin may he be wrapped in bubble wrap cellophane and uh and perhaps um you know Make sure that he's wearing Uggs or moon boots and, and leisure suits, like like mm. John Bertwe would say. Anyway, just an idea. I just need I need him to not 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 go anywhere. I need this. Anyway. 
Um, thanks for joining us, Lee, uh, or joining me, uh, the Royal Us. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll we'll see you in in a, in a little while for our next podcast. Have a great right. one. Bye. <laughs>